On the 25th of July, 2023, Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach will be getting its first ever free DLC titled Ruin. It has been 587 days since the base game was released in December of 2021, and in that time, we've had two teasers and a trailer for its DLC, the revival of the FNAF movie coming up in October of this year, and of course, seven Tales from the Pizzaplex books. It's been a while since we've had anything new to play in this franchise, but we've actually had quite a lot of other things going on. However, I tend to believe that this DLC is genuinely going to progress the story, which may bring us to the end of the Pizzaplex era, ready for Help Wanted 2. But I'd also imagine that Ruin is going to be a little overwhelming for some of you who haven't played the game in a long time, and for those of you who haven't been keeping up with the books. So today, my aim is to very briefly go over a lot of the history of the Pizzaplex, the significance of the characters we've been introduced to, and why all of it could be relevant to the Ruin DLC. Guys, I am as excited as ever for Ruin to come out, and I'm sure you are too. Be sure to press that subscribe button, because we will be covering as much as possible when it releases. From theories to video essays, I've got you covered. When Security Breach initially came out, I was sitting on just 11,000 subscribers, so thank you all so much for subscribing since then, and I cannot wait to see what the next year is going to look like. Let's begin with where this game goes in the timeline, which, yes, is very difficult because there wasn't really a clear year we could place it. However, we know that Security Breach must come after Pizzeria Simulator because the location from that game is found buried underneath the Pizzaplex. The story under construction implies that the Pizzaplex opens in May of one year and the events of Security Breach supposedly shut it down. People have actually used in-game clues to narrow down which year we could be playing in. Namely, if you take a look at the quarterly Faz Life magazines, you'll find that the last edition was the 19th, so the Pizzaplex has to have been open for at least five years. We also know that it must take place after the events of FNAF VR Help Wanted and the Curse of Dreadbad DLC. That's because this is what creates Vanny. Essentially, in Help Wanted, we play as Vanessa, and every ending that we get is a bad ending where Glitchtrap takes over our mind. From the FNAF AR special delivery emails, we find out that Vanessa is suddenly acting a little psychopathic, and she created a bunny identity that she names Vanny. Whenever she's Vanessa, she's herself, but when she's Vanny, we know she is being controlled by and obeying Glitchtrap. The source code for Scott's website said, have you chosen one? And I have, showing a conversation between Vanny and Glitchtrap. But who was the selected one? Well, it was none other than Gregory. Gregory is a mysterious character because there's no Pizzaplex records of him, he has all of the high scores in the arcade machines, and he seems to be homeless. But a lot of that seems to be clarified by the story GGY, in which it is revealed that Gregory is also under the control of Glitchtrap. In the game, you can find 16 retro CDs that contain audio recordings of therapy sessions, but you actually learn that there are two different patients. Patient 71 was innocent Vanessa in the recordings, but the therapists clearly knew there was something up with her in the background, and patient 46 was Gregory, but not the one that we know. He would hack into the animatronics, talk to someone with rabbit ears, and kill off his therapists. However, between those recordings and the events of Security Breach, Gregory had somehow managed to escape Glitchtrap's control. That's potentially why he doesn't remember his own name at the start of the game, and why all the animatronics under Glitchtrap's control do. But how did Gregory manage to escape the demons within his own mind? Well, it could be something to do with the strange arcade games in the Pizzaplex. After all, the same thing happens to Vanessa in the Saviour ending. To get this ending, you have to complete all three Princess Quest minigames. The game files seem to reveal that the princess who we play as is Cassidy, who walks past a scene reminiscent of the missing children's gravestones, is told to rest by an old man, and collects some artifacts from Help Wanted. Only then can she reopen this door to free Vanessa. I've done a whole video on this, but it's possible that the minigames show Cassidy's journey from a missing child in the walls of the pizzerias, to the vengeful spirit in Afton's ultimate custom nightmare, to her presence in the VR experience, which was ported from mobile to arcade games. But there's also something else there which feels like it shouldn't belong. 
This is most likely the raw form of Glitch Trap, heavily speculated to be an artificial intelligence by the name of Mimic One. This AI was created to mimic human interaction. The thing is, it really liked to play hide and seek, and it also saw some pretty traumatic things firsthand. So naturally, the AI would go on to hide from its victims and then brutally kill them. The Mimic 1 program was put into an endoskeleton just named The Mimic, and in the Tales from the Pizzaplex epilogues, we've been seeing it slaughter a whole group of teens in the Pizza Place tourist attraction under the Pizzaplex. In Tiger Rock's epilogue, it wore the flesh of one of its victims, so I can only imagine that in the next epilogue, it's gonna get springlocked to look exactly like what we see down there. Burn Trap. So, if I may briefly summarize, Glitch Trap seems to be a mimicking artificial intelligence influenced in some way by the past and agony of William Afton, and Burn Trap seems to be the mimic endoskeleton controlled by this. In fact, the entirety of the Pizzaplex is under Glitch Trap's control because of the Storyteller's Tree. This was a tree of life that was built in the center of the Pizzaplex atrium. Inside of it was the Mimic One program that would be distributed through its roots to the entire Pizzaplex because Fazbear Entertainment thought it would be an efficient way to produce stories and keep the company in good shape. From what we hear in the story Pressure, William Afton is now being glorified as an urban legend in Fazbear lore. Basically, Fazbear Entertainment are still cutting corners in their business, which leads to various incidents over the years. Children ripped to shreds in serpentine soundproof tubes, unstable AI anime girls in the neighboring Fazplex Tower, selling dream spheres to children which slowly suck their soul out of them. And to achieve all of this, they had to cover up the past by making fun of the supposed rumors. They did this by making the VR experience we talked about before, which was based on the games by a rogue indie developer named Steve Snodgrass, who they kidnapped, tortured, and murdered. It seems like nothing really got any better after the Pizzeria Simulator fire. After all, it's possible that all of the souls are still around. Along with Burn Trap, there's also another entity that lives under the Pizzaplex, a huge conglomeration of animatronic parts called The Blob. There are many theories for where this could have come from, but I believe this could contain the original missing children as Molten Freddy and all of the people killed in the epilogues. The thing is, there are two masks on this thing to watch out for. Each mask has glowing red eyes, except for two. There's a circus baby head, which is clearly not Scrap Baby, and then there's also a puppet head without tear streaks. You see, this series has shown us previously that the puppet only ever had its tears because of Charlie's possession. So the lack of glowing eyes and tear streams implies that Charlie isn't present here. Instead, I think she's in this strange Nightmare on Staff bot cult. They're all painted like the Nightmare version of the puppet, with In Your Dreams written on them. They have the same jump scare sound as Nightmare on, and strangely there's a lot of Nightmare on plushies hidden around the Pizzaplex. Nearby, this door is called Charlie Door in the game files, and the coloured lights above it seem to correlate with the wristbands in the Security Puppet minigame. This very door opens up to what could be the strangest room in the entire game. Inside, there are a ton of post-it notes and staff bot heads everywhere. The drawings on the post-it notes seem to show a development of knowledge, almost as though someone or something is growing up and learning. Again, there are many theories on this room, popular ones relating to the mimic, Charlie Bots and Gregory, who has been thought to be a robot version of the crying child with very similar features going all the way down to a band-aid on his knee. In fact, the saviour ending we talked about previously shows Gregory biting into a Golden Freddy popsicle and Vanessa with an ice cream. If this was the crying child Michael and Elizabeth, it would be beautiful symbolism. Above the poster note room is a strange scene of a family of staff bots sitting around a table. A painting in the surrounding area seems to imply that this is Christmas, and each staff bot looks to represent a different member of the Afton family. It seems like whoever was in this room felt the need to rebuild the Aftons, possibly like what the Mimic could be trying to do. After all, we know that Glitchtrap is in Vanessa's mind, and Vanessa seems to talk about the Afton family in the aforementioned therapy CDs as though she was Elizabeth herself. Vanessa is very strange in this game. She doesn't actually appear much, and there was a lot of debate about whether she was actually Vanny. In the fire escape ending, Freddy sets the Pizzaplex on fire and appears to take down Vanessa. But in a post credit scene, we see her very much still alive, looking over the side of the building. 
There are actually six different endings in Security Breach. We just talked about the fire escape ending, we've gone over the savior ending and the true ending, but if you escape the pizzaplex normally, Gregory will be found lying in the street with Vanny approaching. Look closer and you'll see there's been a missing persons incident recently at the pizzaplex. One of these silhouettes actually looks like Gregory himself, which could make sense knowing he was abducted by Glitchtrap. In the getaway ending, you ride off with Freddy happily ever after, and it's actually Monty who ends up replacing him with Mr. Hippo by his side. Judging by what we see in the Monty Golf Arcade, it seems like this was always Monty's plan. Freddy mentions how there used to be a bunny alongside him, but then something happened. In actuality, there used to be a Glamrock Bonnie, but the in-game messages imply that Monty decommissioned him. Bonnie was the bassist, so he had special claws to help him play. Now Monty has them, and it's possible some of Bonnie's parts could have been used to repair Burn Trap. The final ending requires you to get into Vanny's hideout in Fazerblast, and then press the button to disassemble Vanny. The staff bots actually seem pretty brutal, and what you may have forgotten is that they weren't always there. At some point, someone had called all of the Pizzaplex staff for a meeting at 11.30pm on a Thursday with the promise of cake. Of course, the cake was a lie, because all of the staff were... <clears throat> replaced due to the staff project. It's hard to say who the CEO of Fazbear Entertainment is at the moment, but it seems pretty set in stone that they are under Glitchtrap's influence, given they hired Vanessa with zero prior qualifications. As you can see, it was quite difficult at first to adapt to the way Security Breach told us its story. A lot of it is sprinkled in the duffel bag messages and through environmental storytelling, only for the books to give us clarification later on. And while there's probably a lot more I could talk about and some things that I've missed, there's one more thing that I want to touch on which I believe is really important. The room where you are able to play the therapy CDs looks very familiar. It's an exact copy of the living room from Sister Location. On the television is a loop that goes on forever and ever of the Freddy and Friends TV show that we were given prior to Security Breach's launch. On the wall next to it is a large display of strange symbols. Well, actually, if you look through the Freddy and Friends on Tour series frame by frame, you'll find some strange codes. I won't go too in depth, but these are actually used to decide for this wall code, and it says the following. Break and mend, I built the breath. They are hunt now, drawn to life, not real, still keen. And frit and fraught with thought and zest and jest, no blunt woes. Dodge, duck, flash, shoot, cruel, run, crush the vile ban. Cry not, try not, do not hold out, hope, no. Your life, your aim, will save those with soul. Security Breach was an absolutely wild game with connections to everywhere in the series. There's also a whole endo daycare, references to Jeremy, the FNAF AR emails, and the Fazbear Fright series, and the game is far from being solved. So going into Ruin, I can imagine a lot of small things will be clarified upon and a lot of loose ends will be tied, but it will also open more doors to questions and theories and the future of this series. How will it end? How important will Cassie be? How will all of it tie into Help Wanted 2? We're all going to find out very, very soon. So make sure that you subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed this video. And I hope to see you on the flip side. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you then. What's up Brozones, welcome to the Ozone and welcome to another video. Today I have some massive, massive news. This is, oh my gosh, it's what you've been waiting for actually. It's been, how long has it been since Security Breach? It's been over six months now. Uh, returning guests will be granted free admission to the Pizzaplex. There is no way that this DLC is going to be free. First of all, 2023 as a release date. Hopefully they don't change that. Hopefully it's not like Security Breach where they keep delaying it. But 2023 is the set date and I am completely fine with that. Let's finally take a look at this picture that they have provided us with. And wow. <laughs> wow. 